were being flown home to grieving families for burial. France's junior transport minister Charles Saar and the British consul paid their respects to the victims at the hospital mortuary. Monsieur Saar claims the coach was speeding. According to the tachograph, he says it was doing 125 kilometers per hour or 80 miles an hour. That's 35 kilometers an hour above the speed limit for coaches. Distraught survivors spent much of the day trying to trace family members taken to different hospitals, not knowing whether they were dead or alive. The coach, meanwhile, has been towed away, pending a full investigation into the tragedy. Linda Duffin, Sky News. And two emergency telephone numbers have now been set up to deal with inquiries from friends and relatives of those involved in the French coach crash. The numbers are 071 270 2700 and for relatives only. Staffordshire, that's 0785 223 333. The Shadow Transport Secretary John Prescott has called for all British coaches to be fitted with safeguards to prevent drivers breaking the speed limit. Well, I am concerned, and I know a number of people in the industry are, about these very powerful uh, touring buses, which are double-deckers, which are not brought up to the same stability standards if you get a, an explosion in the tyre, as has happened in this occasion. Secondly, the design of them is an awful lot of glass and you get a lot of injuries and I think a lot more should be done about the design and seat belts, we know they're on, were they being used? And so what concerns me most of all is when you make the regulation changes, how can we sure we enforce them? This bus apparently appears to have been speeding, you could have seen that on the tachograph. People are prepared to take chances, particularly if you're rushing for a ferry, but if they knew the tachograph was going to be checked in this country, they might think twice about it and we've been cutting back on the vehicle inspectors in this country. I wrote to Mr. Parkinson a couple of weeks about it, and I think we should reconsider that. I think Mr. Parkinson now should bring them all together to say, are we doing enough about bus safety, and see whether we can improve it. The SDP, launched in 1981 to break the mould of British politics, has been wound up. After a three-hour crisis meeting earlier tonight, the party's national committee voted the SDP out of existence. The party leader, Dr. David Owen, described it as a sad day. Mr Owen and his two fellow MPs, John Cartwright and Rosie Barnes, will continue to sit in the House of Commons as independent Social Democrats. Mr Owen refused to speculate about his own future. He said earlier in the day that he would not be joining the Labour Party at this stage. When David Owen arrived at the meeting with one of his two remaining MPs, he knew he'd sealed the fate of the party in advance. By casting doubt on its continuing relevance as a political force, it was surprised that the party's ruling right, council thanks, voted overwhelmingly to kill it off swiftly. A sad day and unhappy occasion, according to Dr. Owen, but a decision that had become inevitable. I think it's a sad day. Uh, that, uh, don't make any secret of that. I don't uh, relish this. It's just that we feel it's necessary. But there were a handful of dissidents, one of whom believes the decision is all to do with Dr. Owen's personal ambitions and nothing what to do, do with the viability the of the SDP. Well, I think the reality is that David's political uh, and personal agenda, his, his desire to work himself back close to the Labour Party, is in conflict now with the SDP. It has been for some period of time and he no, no longer leads it, and indeed no longer needs it, and it's therefore a handicap to him, and he wants to get rid of it. The party, which had begun with such a fanfare and with such high hopes, came to its end in this central London hotel after just four hours of discussion, but months of agonising. SDP President John Cartwright said there was less bitterness than might have been expected, and says he will fight again as an independent social democrat. It was, I must say, given the circumstances, an extremely friendly debate and a good temper debate. There was no animosity, but there was a very clear, overwhelming majority in favour of suspending the operation of the SDP's constitution. That was carried by 17 votes uh, to five. So that is an absolutely clear cut decision. And we then approved the statement which you have before you, uh, which gives the reasons, which explains the, what the members of parliament are going to do and which uh, foreshadows the establishment of a campaign for social democracy to keep us together and keep the ideas in being. Even though the departure of the original Gang of Four and the formation of the SDP caused huge resentment in the Labour Party, 